with this topic constantly. So, so today we will uh, speak about some aspects of chanting the holy name. Okay, Mgyantimirandasya Ganajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Garavena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nir Vishesa Sunyavari Pastyat Yade Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarupis Cha Kripa Sindupa Eva Cha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Dadar Sivasadi Gora Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Nama Parad Yuktanam, Name Var Haranagam, Avishranti, Pryuktani, Tanye Varta Karani Cha. Only incessant chanting of Harinam can affect the purification of one who is infected with Nama Parad. Indeed, the incessant chanting of Harinam is the only way to achieve the prayojana of life, which is Krishna Prema. So there are three levels or three uh, categories by which we chant the holy names. One is Nama Parad, one is Nama Bas, and the other one is Sudanam. Sometimes they add a fourth one, uh, which they say is the clearing stage between uh, Namaparad and Sudanam. But three is given by Srila Haridas Thakur in his Nama Harinam Chintamani. So here this verse, uh, Nama Parad really means the 10 offenses to the holy name. They include all the offenses that one can commit. So this process is both um, vidis and nichetas. Vidis means that which we should do. And nichetas means that which we should avoid. That applies to all aspects of our practice in spiritual life, in all categories of activity, in all forms of interaction, uh, particularly in association of devotees. There, that category is applicable completely. That is things with, that we should apply to get the benefit of the activity we're performing, spiritual benefit. And that those activities that we should very carefully avoid in order to, which take us away from moving forward on the path of devotional service. A serious devotee wants to, <clears throat> wants to always make advancement in Krishna consciousness. A serious devotee is not simply happy or contented, that's a better word, to be contented with the level of practice that one is one is presently performing. So one should be always know that there is always advancement to be made. And one of the categories, which is the, one of the main categories, which holds us back in devotional life is offenses. So then I'll read a purport to that. It says, this is from Harinam Chintamani, I'm sorry, this is from Jaiva Dharma by Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur. Take heed that counteracting Nama Parad is troublesome, <clears throat> so it's not easy. Therefore, intelligent persons will carefully avoid commi committing Nama Parad at all. So here, 
rather than concern yourself about getting rid of the effects of Nama Parad, it becomes an intelligent understanding to do everything you can to avoid Nama Parad. And that way, to get rid of the effects of Nama Parad, as it says here, is very troublesome. It is not easy. And if it, there's any offenses committed against devotees, that will really slow down and sometimes even uh, cause one to go backward in spiritual advancement. One has to be very careful. Pinpoint the sources of Navaparad, overcome them diligently, then Sudanam will soon begin to manifest. So see, know the 10 offenses, avoid the 10 offenses, and gradually the pure chanting of the holy name will bring us to the stage of perfection. A faithful devotee is moved to Ashru, tears of happiness, and Pulaka, horripilation, whilst chanting purely, but an undercurrent of Nama Parad in one's character will disqualify one from achieving such ecstatic chanting of Sudanam. So two ecstasies, tears, and horripilations, these come quite soon in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, when one is chanting without offense, particularly tears, mm -hmm. but both. Therefore, the practitioner must be awake to and most cautious about Nama Parad. Mm -hmm. So now, this is a dialogue between a disciple and his spiritual master. So now, the disciple is speaking. He's saying, Srila Gurudev, what are the symptoms of Sudanam? And the answer is, Naimaka Yashyavacha Smarapata Gatam Srota Mulam Gatava. Sudavasu varam vayate rahitam tara yeva satyam. I'll do that again. Naimakayasya vachasmaram patakatam srota mulam gatam vam sudam vasuda vara vayate rahitam tara yeva satyam. Tache deham dravina janata loba pasanda madye nishiptam shana falam janakam snigram evatra vipra. So that is the translation to that is if a devotee just wants others harinam purely, or if just one sudanam enters the path of a devotee's mind or ear, then that one. Sudanam will certainly deliver the devotee from material bondage, whether vibrated properly or improperly, with correct or incorrect grammar, vibrated in separate parts or properly conjoined. O Brahmana, the potency of Sudanam is certainly great. However, if one uses the vibration of Harinam to achieve health, wealth, sons, an opulent residence, or chance under greed for labdhya, distinction, puja, adoration, and pradishta position. In other words, if one others harinam with offense, such chanting will not produce the eternal transcendental result very soon. Therefore, one should diligently avoid offenses in chanting of Sri Harinam. Mm -hmm. So it's mentioned here, it's interesting that uh, just once, even if it's not done right, there is a statement in the Shastra where this is called um, nam, Namabas, or indirectly getting the mercy of the holy name. And uh, Sometimes it's called um, 
Uh, when one acts in devotional service without the intention, still, because the activity is right, still one gets the benefit, just like the example is. There was one man, he was being chased by a, a boar, or an, I'm sorry, by a bull. Uh, and he was yelling, haram, haram. So you see the word ha, first part of hare, and then ram. Haram, now this man was Islamic. So he was chanting the name haram, which means in Islam, means abominable. And then, of course, he died. And what happened was, it says, he achieved liberation simply by chanting haram. We got the example of Ajamil, who was calling out for him, his son. But he called the Lord, the Lord's name in a state of complete helplessness. He chanted in Namabas, not pure Nam, but Namabas, and still all the reactions of all his sinful activities were destroyed. And he had been freed from all the suffering that was meant. The Yamadutas had come to take him, his, his soul away, along with the subtle body, to Yamaraj for punishment. There, the subtle body undergoes a tremendous amount of suffering. And then after that suffering is completed, then it's, one is given a physical body in the next life. And it has to, again, begin the cycle of birth and death. But uh, Ajamil, simply by that one chanting of the name of Narayan, not even knowing he was calling for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he uh, achieved the, the results of the reactions of all his sinful activity were nullified. And then he was given the opportunity to go to a holy place in the Himalayas, hard war, hard war, one of the more holy places in the Himalayas. And for 12 years, he finished his life off and went back home, back to Godhead. And you can see how powerful and how merciful the chanting of the holy name is. Uh, here, there's a further discussion in this uh, dialogue between a guru and a disciple. The guru is speaking, the chanting of Harinam will be spoiled in two ways. Samanya exogenously or brihat enormously. Chanting with ordinary exogenous faults is called namabhas. And the results of chanting are delayed. Impure chanting with enormous fault is nam aparad. In this condition, only constant and intensive chanting for a protracted period can remove the, enorm the enormous faults. Hmm. So um, what's being said here is that the, the, for chanting with this desire to achieve some benefit from the material benefit from the chanting um, or chanting simply to uh, avoid getting the reactions of one's activities. All of these are what we say tainted with personal material motivations and therefore one should carefully avoid that. Um, so this is a preface to a discussion between the guru and the disciple on the 10 offenses. Um, Lord Chaitanya says, Nam nam akari bahuda nija sarva shaktis tatar pita niyamita smadane nakalaha ita disris tava kripa bhagavan mamapi Dordaiva midrisam miha jini na nuragaha. So, and he says, 
Durdaivam. He glorifies the holy name as being very merciful and being freed from any rules and restrictions. He says one can chant anytime, any place. There are no re restrictions, there's no rules. But then he says, Dordaivam. What is that Dordaivam? Dordaivam means I commit offenses. So again, we come back to what is the block in our um, process of devotional service. We commit offenses. If we commit offenses, then we become more and more attracted to material sense gratification. And then if that continues, then we are become attracted to materialistic association. And if we take materialistic association in place of association with Vaishnavas, then we will eventually fall down from the whole, from the path of devotional service. So one should be very careful not to commit offenses. As it says here, it is, it is, it's the preventative uh, cautionary statement given by the Shastras and by the Guru. Don't worry so much about getting rid of the reactions of Nama Parad. Don't commit on Nama Parad and you won't have this problem. So we have to be aware. Srila Prabhupada, when he would... Uh, give the initiation ceremony to the devotees he would always have the ten offenses read and many times he would comment on each of the offenses or on some of the more key offenses for instance the first offense the third offense the seventh offense these are the ones that he emphasized that we should be very careful not to commit I'll read the first offense. Translation, to blaspheme the sadhu is a very serious offense. Saintly devotees are attached to chanting Harinam and propagating his glories all over the universe. Therefore, why should Harinam tolerate any offense against the sadhus? Interesting. The holy name, we have to understand the holy name is a person, it's Krishna. And he has manifested himself in the form of that name as the most merciful and the most available uh, form that he can provide for us why we are struggling in this material world. So Harinam is very, very merciful. But as it says here, if one commits an offense against saintly devotees, especially those who have dedicated their lives to propagating glories all over, then that offense is not tolerated by the holy name himself. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu makes a similar statement in the, which is written in Chaitanya Bhagwat by Vrindavan Das Thakur in the Antyalila Anchakanda, where he says, one who <clears throat> blasphemes and criticizes, criticizes my devotee, then my holy name becomes the, the, the punisher of the offender. The name itself becomes the the punisher. And the, even though one may continue to chant the holy names, that holy name turns into a form of a chastising rod for those who are uh, habituated or even occasionally find fault with those who uh, glorify the, the process of devotional service by preaching the message of Krishna consciousness. Okay, that's the, I won't go through all the fences because we don't have time, but I'll read, I'll read the three that I mentioned plus one more. We'll skip the second offense. The third offense is a person never harbors any a person must never harbor the misconception 
that the ghoul who is realized in the glories of the holy name is an ordinary mortal. Yeah, to take the uh, spiritual master as being an ordinary person negates the fact that the spiritual master has become empowered by the Lord to serve in that capacity. He has gained that pow empowered mercy by his devotional activities, and therefore he is no longer uh, ordinary. Prabhupada said something very interesting that turned in quite, was quite controversial. And uh, eventually Srila Prabhupada um, dispensed with the controversy. But he said that the spiritual master's body or one who is fully engaged 24 hours a day in devotional service is not material, it's spiritual. And then uh, one person, he was a good friend of Srila Prabhupada. His name was Dr. Patel. He would come on the morning walks in Bombay when Prabhupada was there in 1973 and in 74. And you can read this discussion. It's interesting. Mr. P Dr. Patel, he was quite learned and he was also de a devotee. And he said to Srila Prabhupada, yes, the spiritual master's body is, is, uh, is, is spiritual, but it's not like Krishna's body. And Prabhupada said, spiritual means spiritual. <laughs> and then the conversation ensued where Prabhupada was saying that if you take an iron rod and you place it into the fire and you leave it there for a prolonged period of time, that iron transforms itself into fire itself. And then it no longer acts in an iron way, but it acts as, in a way that it, whatever it's touched to will burn that object. And then Prabhupada went on, on to discuss. So Prabhupada did acknowledge that that the body between the living entity and Krishna is different, but he's, he wanted to emphasize the point that spiritual means spiritual. When we say the spiritual master's body is spiritual, it's not like there's a second spiritual and then Krishna is the first spirit. Spiritual means spiritual. So it has to be seen and understood in that way. And even if the spiritual master may perform some ordinary activities, such as maintaining the body or even dealing with some worldly situation out of some necessity, one should not see that as something material. That's just part of the spiritual master's activities that should not be found as criticized, just like sometimes people would criticize Srila Prabhupada. Sometimes Prabhupada would chant um, a verse and he would forget some of the uh, statements, some of the Sanskrit words in the verse. Or sometimes he would chant the verse in a different way than when the verse was written. And uh, sometimes devotees would feel, oh, you know, the guru is making a mistake. But if you point that out as a mistake, you're not seeing the whole picture. Um, yeah, sometimes the spiritual master will forget the verse or that he's trying to communicate, but if it's seen as a fault and therefore, and criticized in that way, then that's, that is offense. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one senior devotee, he saw that, and he was going to say something to Srila Prabhupada, not in public, but in a private way. And the, to just to instruct Srila Prabhupada, but that was a com immediately found out by the other devotees. And that devotee was told, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't instruct your spiritual master. Like that. So yeah, a person never harbors the misconception that the guru who is realized in the glories of the Hari, Hari Nam is an ordinary mortal because why? He is simply repeating the words that Krishna has given. 
So therefore, because he's connected by giving the Vani of Krishna, he is also he's also seen as being one who is also worshipped by the living entities as being on the same level as Krishna, but not the spiritual master never thinks I'm on the same level with Krishna. If he does, he's fallen. But the, the disciples should see that way. In 1966, Srila Prabhupada gave one of his, I think, second initiation. And um, Prabhupada had been speaking very en enthusiastically against persons who claim to be God. He would make statements like anyone who says they're God, they're dog, G-O-D, D-O-G. And so Prabhupada wanted to point that out, that, you know, people pre pretentiously and ignorantly or for some material gain want to present themselves as being the supreme. In fact, <laughs> yesterday I was at the, uh, the Rathiyatra in... Uh, in, um, in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here in the United States. And uh, I was asked to do the questions and answers. There's a, there's a booth that they have where you can, you, people can come and ask questions and answers. And so there was one very seemingly nice gentleman there and he was listening, but then he started to talk and, and his whole dialogue or his not even dialogue his whole expression was yes you know we are all the supreme being and there are different levels of the supreme being um every being is supreme uh, but there is different categories of the supreme and he was trying to uh, let me know along with the other people that he was on a very high level of supremacy so this it got a little sticky <laughs> and eventually the devotees pulled him aside and preached to him separately <laughs> but this is what happens you know people like to for whatever reason it's ignorance it's it's actually an offense a great offense to categorize oneself as the supreme so when Srila Prabhupada was giving this talk in New York, he, this talk was the conclusion of an initiation ceremony he had just performed. And at the end of the ceremony, he, he said something. He said, and the spiritual master should be seen as God. And that was the last thing he said. And he walked off. The, the, uh, he walked out of the room. And everybody was saying, oh, my God. Before he was saying, now, this is 1966. The devotees are quite new. And they didn't know much about the process, but they accepted whatever Srila Prabhupada said. And when he had said that, the reaction was, well, he's been saying anyone who says he's God is dog. Now he's saying we should see him as God. And, but one devotee was quite <clears throat> uh, astute and he could see, he could understand. He said, no, no, he's not saying that. He said, we should see him in that way, but he is not claiming to be God. And that is the benefit for the disciple because if the disciple serves the spiritual master in that mood, then they are that that service is going directly to the supreme personality of godhead as the spiritual master is the transparent via media as Srila Prabhupada would use the example he is the eyeglasses by which one can see the eyes are impaired for for whatever reason and one applies the glasses and then the glasses allows one to see the object so the spiritual master allows us or performs the service of connecting us with Krishna through service that we perform for his benefit, which is really the instructions that Krishna is giving the spiritual master to impart to the disciple or people in general also. 
Now this, this third verse is very important. And then I'll mention one more verse, the seventh verse. It says, Nam no balad yasya hi papa budir, navidyate tasman yamahi sudhi. Those commit sin relying on the purifying power of chanting Hari Nam to overcome the negative reactions are the most egregious, egregious offenders. No amount of penance, yoga, or meditation can absorb their offense. Mm -hmm. So here, the example is given if one is thinking, well, I have the formula for eradicating the results of my sinful activities or the reactions of my sinful activities. And therefore, um, I can, you know, have a little illicit sex. I can have a little smoke some dope or I can do something that I want to do that is within that breaks the four legative principles. But, you know, the holy name is very powerful. The holy name is very merciful. I'll just chant and then I'll be free from all that. Now, that intentional use or misuse of the holy name will cause one to lose the mercy of the holy name even greater. The offense itself is already an offense. But it, it's compounded with the second offense, thinking that I can get free from the reactions simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And there are many examples. Prabhupada would recite a few that happened within our society with devotees who were thinking like that and eventually um, started to perform activities like that and then eventually... Uh, because it was an offense on top of an offense, two offenses, uh, they weren't able to stay in the society of devotees. Mm -hmm. So one should be careful. Mm, if one, Prabhupada said, if one mistakenly or accidentally commits some offense, then one can chant the holy names and the, the holy name in due course of time who can relieve the reactions of such activities. But that is an accident, or what we might say due to a circumstance that was unprovoked. And, uh, but if one is intentionally, this is the point, intentionally thinking, well, I have the formula now, I can chat and then I'll get free from the reactions of my sinful activities and I'll go on committing my sinful activities. Okay, so that's the, that's the eighth offense. And of course, uh, the offense that we should very carefully, there's much more to this dialogue here and it's really interesting, but we'll have to curtail our time and go on to the next session. And that is that one should uh, be very, very enthusiastic in their japa every day, especially in japa and in kirtan also, for sure, both to very carefully chant attentively and hear nicely. The hearing process must be acquiesced or one should acquiesce or uh, its hearing process in such a way that one makes an effort to hear nicely. And one should do whatever it takes to hear nicely. That means preparing the mind, offering prayers, avoiding the distractions and creating an environment which is somewhat free from distractions or the cause of distractions, either one. <laughs> the cause of distraction is an environment by which we work throughout the day doing other services in that environment. And if we chant in that same environment, we will find ourselves thinking about some of the things that we need to do throughout the day simply by the objects and the atmosphere around us. So one should try to chant in a, in a more neutral atmosphere 
where these uh, these possible distractions can happen simply by environmental arrangement. Okay, so work hard and chant with attention. And I'll read one statement by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and it says here, this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur, there's a couple here, It says here, simply by one's own effort, no one in this world can overcome distraction. Such a victory can only come by, the, by your merciful blessings. So he's referring to Krishna. It is impossible for any jiva to overcome inattention by personal effort. By your mercy, O oh Lord, it can be accomplished very easily. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary to beg for your grace with greater humility, for this is the only means of salvation. And that's from Bhakti Vinoda Quran, inattentive chanting. So he's giving us a clear understanding. Our efforts alone will fall short of attentive chanting. Therefore, we have to beg and, and pray to the Lord to be merciful to us and please give us his mercy in the form of attentive chanting. Okay, so uh, we'll conclude here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the um, glories of holy name and uh, about the offenses too. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, you can share and uh, ask Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, Hare Krishna. I have a question, Guru Maharaj. Uh, like, uh, suppose uh, some devotees, uh, they have joined newly and uh, they are just chanting some few rounds, like four rounds or six rounds like that. And for them, can we, um, can we give the importance of uh, chanting offenselessly or, um, and uh, about the uh, 10 offenses of the holy name? Can we explain to them or... Uh, uh, or it's not uh, recommended for them at that particular stage. So what should I do? No, we should explain it because this, this, is, the, this is the actual essential principle which would allow one to continue to chant the holy name is that they should be somewhat aware. That's why there's a lot of statements written by Srila Prabhupada in his books to uh, educate us that yes, chanting means two things attention and avoiding inattention or avoiding the offenses. Yeah. So I think it's good, but you can give, you may not have to give all of them, but you can give some of the essential ones. Yeah. And it, it, I don't think people will feel, you know, like imp imposed upon if you do that. It'll simply be something that comes along with chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. That's my opinion. That's, and I, you know, we, we, told, we tell them, chant Hare Krishna, avoid the offenses. And that makes them curious, well, what are the offenses and what, and what, and then how to avoid them. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah. So, uh, but uh, I, I fear that they may get afraid, like uh, if I tell anything like that. Um, I think you, you, we shouldn't demand it. Yeah. We should nicely present it along with the encouragement to chant. Mm. Well, you might say, well, how new are the people? 
in the initial stage when we're from someone is just beginning to chant, then just let them chant. Yeah. That's but if they're chanting four or six rounds regularly, then it would seem to me that to, in order to help them, they should be more aware that there are things that have to be avoided. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Shukhava Mataji, uh, you have a question? Hare Krishna Mataji, yes, please. Yes, Mataji, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the lovely class. Um, I have a question, Guru Maharaj. Um, how to inspire devotees to chant early in the morning? Because, like, it is the best time to chant, but it is like uh, very difficult to explain everyone that you know, it's, it's good to chant early in the morning than later on in the daytime. Well, Srila Prabhupada explains it in so many different ways. One, he says that you know, um, if you haven't finished your prescribed number of rounds, then in this case, he referred to 16, but you can reuse the word prescribed number, which means that whatever vow they have changed, whatever numerical vow they have taken. And then we say that um, you can be easily victimized by wrong activity. You can commit offenses. You can be distracted away by material energy. So we say there is a certain protection that comes along with completing your numerical vow. Therefore, we encourage that as early as possible. Yeah. That's one thing. And then the early morning hours are more conducive to meditation, prayer, worship. So it's better from the, the atmospheric point of view uh, there is a statement in that reference that the mode of goodness is more stronger or more available in the early morning hours from the hour of 2 o'clock a.m. Uh, onward until, you know, all the way up to 10 a.m., but even before that. And... If you're going to build a house, the most important part in order to establish a nice house is the foundation. Whatever you build on top of the foundation will be uh, strong depending on the foundation. So we build our spiritual life through sadhana and the essence of sadhana is chanting. Of course, for Grihasas, we also should worship the deity at home. And that's also part of the morning activity. But um, one should think, why not get up early enough to allow myself more time for chanting? Late night activities are really not necessary. Especially for devotees, sometimes we go out preaching or sometimes we go to a program, but that's not like every day. But one should avoid unnecessarily just staying up late. Best to take rest early, that way you can, you'll find yourself able to get up earlier. And that'll give you the time you need for chanting. Yes, I, sometimes when, when I try and explain that, you know, they come up say that, oh, we are the night people, we can focus more at night time, we, we can do stuff at night uh, more efficiently. So I just, I don't know what to say in that case. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do that more efficiently, but your spiritual life will be less efficient. 
<laughs> so you you trade one for the other. So Thank then, what, what's important? Of course, spiritual life. Yeah, but I, I'll try. I'll try that. Okay. Let's see if I All can right. convince that uh, person. <laughs> be successful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I need your blessings to help out. Hare Krishna. Hare Namrata Mataji, you have a question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Dhanvat Pranam Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, Namrata Hare Krishna. Yeah. So my question was. Uh, uh, is it recommended to change your, uh, you know, atmosphere, uh, like not chanting in a same type of atmosphere every day? Um, the best is, well, you can do that. That's, that's an option. But I think the best thing is to create an atmosphere which you can work with and then make it more and more what we say free from distractions i would say if you're not if you're not going out and within your home find that place where you this is where you go and chant every day it has the right atmosphere it's free from distractions uh, i would say that would be a better solution than just to change atmospheres from day to day because you may change it to something that's not so conducive or more distracting. Okay, Maharaj. Uh, if you don't mind, just one more question, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. Did that make sense? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, in the temple, uh, I have some of the devotees, they, so they are new girls. And uh, uh, when uh, we, uh, we preach them or approach them in a humble way, or we say, you know, make more explanatory way. So the leaders or the, you know, uh, those who are guiding us, they say that, Sometimes we don't have to explain them uh, too much. We just have to, you know, like tell them you have to do this. Uh, nothing, nothing, uh, because if you keep explaining them, everything they can't understand. So there are certain mentality of people. There are certain community. They, they are used to, you know, forcing themselves for certain things. Yeah, that's true. So um, you have to see the, I would say, you have to see the, the, the process by the individual. And for some, yes, and for some, you may be more cautious. Some people need it and some people don't need it. Some people, I think you have to discriminate between the individual and instead of having a policy that, well, new people should not be instructed at all. No, some, we have to see the individual. The more intelligent a person is, the more they want to learn everything about what they're doing. Okay. The more serious they are, they also want to learn more about what they're doing. You, it's it's a tactic. You have to learn how to see it and use it uh, accordingly. To give a one type of answer will uh, will not fit every situation. The situation will change depending on the individual. If they don't, if you just tell them and they don't ask anything, that may be fine. But if you can see that more is required, then 
Yeah. It's just some some people like, okay, don't don't explain us so much. I mean, just tell us what to do. Well, They're like, fine. yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, but how long can that go on? After some time, they may stop. Yes, that's the, that's exactly what I think. Like, uh, it may not last long if they are having such a mentality. Yeah, right. When you start of glorifying what they're doing, showing the benefit of what they're doing, how to improve what they're doing, it gives them a chance to think, oh, wow, yeah. It's much more than just doing something. So uh, basically, try to find more inquisitive people rather than no, this set of. No, we give it to everybody. The holy name is for everyone. <laughs> we want to spread the holy name to everyone, even the the dumb. But, you know, we have to, that's our duty, to give everyone a chance for spiritual life. But some require more and some require less also to get started. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it takes more than just one person. A lot of times just to bring another person from one state to another. This is all this is all practical use of intelligence in, in the situation you find yourself in. The goal should okay. I'm, I want to get them to chant and at, at some time, some time accept the chanting as something that they can adopt in their life. And that's a process. That means other things have to be there to support that. Or maybe other okay. people also. Okay. I think uh, uh, taking seniors help would be better <laughs> rather than just, you know. Yeah. You, it never hurts to take advice from the right persons. <laughs> right. That we want. That's practical. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mirage. Thank you, Namrata. Hare Krishna. Ciao. Hare Krishna. Um, devotees, any more questions? Um, Guru Maharaj, I have one more question, Guru Maharaj. Um, uh, since so long, I have been thinking of asking you, uh, Guru Maharaj, um, like um, I got the um, we have deities now, Jagannath Baldev Subhadramahi, uh, deities now. And uh, morning, I, I heard in one lecture, like we have to know the importance of doing Mangalarti um, in the early morning. And um, so I'm just following um, that, um, yeah. that and uh, waking up. And now um, I'm not getting that much time for chanting in the morning because. Uh, Right after I do Mangalarti, I'll get just only half an hour time. And after that, I have to be in the kitchen for lunch boxes, preparation and everything. Prasadam. So, so Guru Maharaj, I'm sometimes I'm not getting that much time. Also, I'm unable to wake up early, but my main focus is doing Mangalarti in the morning. So I'm unable to balance Guru Maharaj. Um, so for Good luck. Time I have to... <laughs> what can I say? You have to see what you need to do. Yeah, uh, I'm just uh, struggling, Guru Maharaj. Um, um, but uh, I'm trying to go to sleep early, but uh, some, time, some days uh, it's not uh, possible, some days. Um, what you can do is you say, my dear Lord Jagannath, <laughs> thank you. You have come into my home and you pure, purifying my whole life. And I'm so happy to have the opportunity to serve you. But I also want to spend more time serving the Holy Name. So please give me your mercy. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And I need your blessings too, Guru Maharaj. Blessings come with the instructions. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes.
So we can we can say, my dear Jagannath, he's very personal. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm happy to serve you, and I really love to serve you, and my life has become so more filled with great opportunities for spiritual advancement because you are here giving mercy. But now I have less time for chanting. So Jagadath, come up with a plan <laughs> to help me. <clears throat> it's good, Maharaj. I'll surely pray. And thank you. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> It's good one. Sure, definitely. Thank you. Okay, Dhani. thank you. So, devotees, any more questions or comments? Gurmaraj, I think uh, there are no more questions now. Gurmaraj. Okay, that takes us right to the hour. Yes, good so Thank you very much. And we'll, uh, I'll be in Gita Nagri tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a receptivity problem catching the internet there because it's the internet is not so available there. But I will uh, do my best to get to the hotspot and have class tomorrow. So um, we can look I'm forward sorry. to, to I'm sorry to interrupt uh, you. Oh, yeah. uh, tomorrow yeah. is Chitty Shakti's yeah. third, third. Yeah, final uh, session. Okay, now Tuesday, uh, I'm giving initiations uh, at Gita Nagari, second initiations anyway. Yes, and so there's, for me, I'm not able to do that, give class on Tuesday. Wednesday, I have to travel a long distance throughout most of the day. And so Wednesday is also not available for me. Thursday, we'll be back to the regular time at uh, with the devotees in, uh, what is it, Harrisburg? No, good marriage, Bhakti Sangha, Charlotte devotees. Charlotte devotees, okay. And uh, so that's at... Uh, uh, it's um, um, morning, uh, 7.20 Eastern time. Okay, 7.20 Eastern time, USA. Yes, good. So I should be there. I'll be there for oh seven twenty Eastern Time USA on Thursday. Yes, good Maharaj. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I also have an appointment that <laughs> on Thursday at eight o'clock East Eastern Time. Oh. No, Central Time. I have appointments, so that's even more difficult. So I guess Thursday's out too. Okay, so. Uh, then I um, I'm sorry, when I'm traveling, I can't really maintain a regular yeah. program. It's so hard. That's why we need more devotees to kind of take up the, uh, you know, the responsibility.